Hey y'all, welcome back to Papa Creek Farm. So today I'm gonna do a little garden tour update uh, as well as show you guys what came in on Friday. Um, kind of just some updates around the farm. Join me. All right guys, so as you can see behind me are my two rows of tomato plants as well as my row of peppers. Um, and what I'm being told by family members and everybody who has bought tomatoes from me, uh, the starts, that theirs are doing better than mine. I think that's because our soil is so clay and compact um, and we only were able to add one layer of compost or of manure this year so that's telling me that I really need to fertilize this. I also have already had one um, tomato, baby tomato, that I actually had to pull off because it had some blossom and rot. Um, so that tells me I'm clearly deficient in calcium and peppers and tomatoes need calcium. I'm gonna end up with a lot of blossom and rot on both my plants if I don't have calcium. So I did go ahead and order um, an organic calcium supplement that is meant for organic gardeners. Um, I'm gonna add that tonight. It's, I think it's five gallons that I bought, or no, I'm sorry, it's one gallon that I bought, but it makes like 80 gallons. So clearly it gets concentrated, um, it's concentrated, so I have to dilute it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that to these tonight when I do my watering in hopes that I don't end up dealing with tomato and rot, or blossom and rot the whole, the whole season through, which I have dealt with in the past at other gardens um, that I've had. I do have lots and lots of baby tomatoes, as well as ones that are started in my blossom bags. So these are really just, their gift bags. Um, and this one I can probably take off because I've got one more blossom here that looks like it's, it's already dead. Um, so I just have to mark these. I'm gonna mark up here uh, with a little ribbon to say that these are the ones I'm saving seeds from because they're, these are gonna be true. So this is the Amish paste tomato, which you can kind of tell is, um, it's a paste tomato, so it's almost like a Roma, uh, but a little bit bigger. Over on the cherry tomatoes, I am like going to be overrun the cherry tomatoes really soon. These are supposed to be yellow cherry tomatoes. We'll see for sure what they end up being um, because these are ones that we save seeds from from a grocery store tomato. This one is supposed to be a sweet pepper, sweet red, but typically sweets have kind of that flatter bottom. So I'm gonna have to look back um, at my sweet reds and see if they're supposed to have more of a pointed tip or not, or this one just got mixed up. Because right down here um, is a different sweet pepper. I think these ones are my green peppers. And that one's more like that flat bottom, um, which actually you can see this one's getting a little bit of that blossom end that's kind of rotting right there. So I'm probably gonna have to pick that one off which is sad. My zucchini plants are doing wonderful, which if you ever grown zucchini, it's like one of the easiest things to grow. This is a, so this is a female. This is a female flower. That's a female. It's a fruit. Uh, these have male and female flowers. None of my male flowers are open though. So unfortunately this one probably won't actually produce anything because it can't pollinate with anything that's there. Uh, and I have a few other squashes in the garden, but none of them have male flowers open because they do readily cross pollinate. Um, so this one probably won't do anything. I'm starting to get peas. I didn't plant a ton of peas uh, because normally we're overrun with them. But I'm a little disappointed that I didn't plant as many just because now I want to eat them all. I did have one earlier that was really, really young and you can just snap them off and eat the whole thing. I love the look of my pole beans. So these are going to take off and they're going to go right up this whole trellis. Um, these are not great trellises, but they'll work for this year, and we'll do something different next year. But these ones I really started to kind of train to go up the trellis, and you can see that all the way My down. corn is looking lovely. Uh, in New York State, they always say, and I don't know if this is elsewhere as well, but I know in New York they always say the corn should be knee high by 4th of July, and I definitely think we're going to get there, um, and some will even go well beyond that, which is awesome, because I have struggled with corn in the past. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm in the barn for a few more updates. Um, the ducks are so noisy, oh my goodness. Whenever I'm in here, they're like whacking away. Um, which they're in the chicken thing right now, the chicken pen. And the chickens are mostly over in the duck pen. That's how it goes. During the day, they switch. There's a lot more chickens than there are ducks though, so the chickens really need the bigger area, but whatever. Actually, Barney. Hi, Barney. It's my beautiful rooster. And he has started crowing. Um, he crows in the morning, starting at about 4.30 a.m. And does not stop until we let him out in the morning. So our mornings have started a lot earlier lately. Hi, Barney. Hi, Mr. Man. And what Barney was standing on is our brooder 
uh, for our meat chickens. They arrived on Friday. Look at those cute little things. My son on the way home, he was holding the, the container with them and he said, they're so cute. I said, please don't get too attached. We're going to get these ones. <laughs> so these are Cornish Cross. We ordered 40 um, because we want to try to get to full meat self-sufficiency and obviously my husband hunts as well so that you know we don't have to have a cow on the farm to provide our red meat um, but these will hopefully get us through at least the winter and then we'll do another batch as long as we like them uh, the only thing is we have already lost it's okay we've already lost four uh, we lost one the first day not sure exactly what happened and then we lost three the next day um, they were all within about 36 hours of arrival so I assume it was something with stress of travel um, this right here, this type of brooder we're using, is called an Ohio brooder. Basically, it's fluorescent lights on either side, um, and we can turn one off. Like, I have one off right now because it's nine, almost 90 degrees out, but they still obviously are going under there, so it's, it's plenty cool for them. Uh, basically, they can go in and out of it. They have water at this end and food at the other end. This is just like a, um, trough or wash basin, um. They have it at each end so that they move a lot and they go to each end so that they don't sit around because Cornish Cross are notorious for just sitting around doing pretty much nothing but eating and drinking. Um, they will stay in here for about two to three weeks and then we'll get them out to the chicken tractor that we still have to kind of finish up completely. Um, so the khaki campbells will all get processed when we process the chickens. Uh, the chickens will raise out for six to eight weeks depending on their size. I would like them to be a little bit bigger so I want to raise them for close to the eight, uh, maybe even a little bit beyond that depending on how they're doing. We want to make sure that they don't have health issues so we don't have chickens that are breaking legs uh, and not being able to get to food and water for those reasons but we'll see uh, as, as kind of time goes along how they're doing so we will obviously update you guys on the chicks and their progress and we'll also update you guys on the chicken tractor and see how that works um we did have one fault to it already uh so we tried to move it we had put some wheels on and we tried to move it with the lawnmower and it snapped one of the two by fours so we do have to fix that and it just gives us a good idea of like okay this isn't perfect so what can we change what can we modify to make it better um so another big update that I am super excited to share, if you guys have been following my hive inspections, um, you know that I had one hive that was queenless and I did put a brood box uh, or a brood frame from another hive that had young brood, um, some larvae, some eggs, put that in the frame, left it for quite a while. Um, now there was already a queen cell that had been opened, but I didn't see any active, I didn't see a queen at the time when I put that brood frame in and I didn't see any... I didn't see the queen, I didn't see any laying. Uh, could have been that she just wasn't mated yet, which is very, very possible, and I'm hoping that, I assume that's the case, I should say, um, because when I checked it yesterday, I have eggs, and I have a lot of eggs, and so I have a laying queen. They are not, so sometimes worker bees will lay. Um, they can occasionally attempt to lay if they feel it's absolutely necessary, but when they lay, their eggs end up sticking to the sides of the cell because their butts are not long enough. Hence why the queen is such a, this big long bee because she has to get her butt down in there to lay those eggs and lay them perfectly. So those eggs were perfectly on the bottom. They, they looked super healthy. Um, that brood that frame that I had put in there was all capped. Um, you could see actually I watched a couple bees come out, which is just the coolest thing to see a bee come out of itself. You know, brand new, brand new bee. Um, coming out of itself. So hopefully this hive takes off. It was one of my strongest hives in the beginning and then like I said I went queenless for whatever reason. I, I am almost positive it did not swarm because there was not this massive loss of bees uh, and I did not see a swarm. Uh, also it just kind of like all of a sudden happened. I noticed it in time for to be able to kind of remedy it right away um, but they had already started to kind of fix it so either I killed the queen or, or something happened to her um, but they have definitely they're definitely coming back so I still have two hives that I don't have a second brood box on the one is getting there uh, it was what I would say is my weakest hive to start because it had the least amount of bees um, it's got a great queen though queen's laying I've seen her multiple times she looks great looks super healthy they're just a smaller hive so it's going to take them a bit longer to establish um, enough to be able to put a second brood box on 
Uh, and then the, that first one that was queenless obviously doesn't have a second brood box on because they weren't really making any brood. Um, the two that do have second brood boxes on, I did check on those yesterday as well. And they have lots of drawn out comb, there's honey and there's bee bread in those ones on the second, the second box. Um, so hopefully in the next few weeks I'll start seeing some brood up there, which would be awesome. And then once those are pretty much all filled, I'll take the feeders out and I will go ahead and put honey supers on. I cannot wait to get honey. Yesterday when I was doing an inspection and I was taking off, when you take off that top box, oftentimes there's uh, you know comb that is between the two boxes, um, putting the frames together, and there's honey in those sometimes. And popped it off, obviously it opens up some of those cells, and some honey dripped onto my smoker. Um, it was on the part where it's where you pump it. So when I got done, I went ahead and took a little taste of it because I was so excited that there was some honey and it was so good. And to know that those came from my bees is the coolest thing. Uh, they are doing super well. We've got this huge field in the back that is just full of wildflowers. There were um, a lot of yellow and purple ones a few weeks ago. Now there's the choke cherries are coming into, into bloom and we have tons of choke cherries, which is a good and a bad thing. Um, Choke cherries are obviously, they, they're not good for us and they can choke out a lot of really good vegetation. But our choke cherries are pretty much in areas that aren't a big deal. They're kind of in the middle of the field um, and somewhat around the, the border of the field, but they're not killing out trees, which is good. If we notice that, we will take them down. Um, but right now, it's great for the pollinators. Tons of flowers on them and I'm so excited. So that was our little, our little update for today. Um, my garden my garden tour my mini garden tour just kind of showed you guys things that have actually really made a big difference and change in the last few weeks and then our update on our barn and our, our meat birds so like i said we got 36 meat birds now uh, due to the loss of four and we'll be processing those in six to eight weeks so thank you all for joining me please like and subscribe and join me on the next one